We're in a small village just outside of Lusa in Portugal. It's a quiet little town, quite a rustic place. Really traditional Portuguese people, very friendly, very welcoming. We come here and we get a good mix of riding, very European, rooty, loamy dirt, uh, rocks, a little bit of everything, nice long tracks. So it's really good for the riders for training and they, they don't get too soft because it's not like uh, <laughs> It's not like the south of Spain where we go sometimes, it's a little bit colder, it's a bit more like the UK. Me and Walter used to wear in World Champs jersey last year. Like, you definitely feel like you stand out, you know, there's only one of you in a World Champs jersey. Some days, the season does feel a long way off. Well, I know, like, for World Champs last year, like the excitement you get when you know that the race yeah. run's coming up. Yeah, that's a pretty good feeling. I kind of try and remember that actually, when you're like, this is definitely what I want to be doing, this is a good feeling. I rode with Matt and we did some pretty hard runs and being able to follow him and see that he's pushing on and, and I was right there, so that's, that's nice. You get to also see again, again with Mark, uh, another elite male rider, it's, it's good to, to follow each other so you can learn a bit about Maybe where you've got to improve on some or oh, some sections of the course. With Matt and Mark being so knowledgeable, they help me out with everything. Like I feel like I can, the team environment's good, and I can ask any questions I want, and they'll always help me. And I think that's uh, a pretty priceless thing for someone my age. I think that it's going to help me out a lot with being more confident with myself and knowing that all I need to do is turn up and run my bike as best as I can. How are you feeling after that crash this morning? Yeah, I'm not too bad. A bit battered and bruised, but I'm all right, yeah. Lessons learned, lessons learned. Testing is to be able to create a baseline for the riders um, that they feel comfortable, confident on the bike, that they get as much grip as possible so that when you go to different tracks they're able to tune the shock and fork either one click one way or one click another way um, for the different riding conditions. So the rear shock we just fitted for Mark um, isn't doing exactly what Mark wants it to do so that's come straight off the bike and gone straight into the Fox truck to be set to try and give him a different feeling and improve the way the bike feels for him. We're on our own exclusively with Fox and we can make those changes within a few minutes and get him back up the hill. The last few days we've been fine tuning really. A few, uh, few fast time runs to get it like a a race condition, a race simulation as such. There's a few sketchy looking jumps on the track. It takes a few goes at, I guess. I want to do a few run-ups and make sure I know where I'm going and where I'm taking off and watch some of the boys over. At races, you normally get pretty big takeoffs and big landings. You've got a bit of room for error, but these ones, yeah, they're quite precise. They're both quite calculated and they both really look deep into everything they're doing and, uh, you know, put a lot of effort into what they're doing. So I think they're as far as when it comes to bike racing and how they approach it, I think they're quite similar. Talking to Will before we even started, uh, talking about training and stuff before the winter even started, so the goals, say, for myself was say, trying to get on like a World Cup podium. Obviously the main objective is trying to win, so um, yeah, that's what we're going for. And uh, I think we've got a good, good team environment to um, help that succeed. Nip was the fastest today. And he's had a whopping crash, the tough little bugger, and he's still gone fast. <laughs> Not much more to say, is there? I wrapped it up. <laughs> That's a wrap. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Oh, God.